Hi all, greetings from the apocalypse. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make something called fire coat. Now it has very simple ingredients and we use it in a few situations. What we're doing is we're actually creating a surface that oxygen won't penetrate. So let's say you're soldering a 14 karat ring shut. And uh, if you've ever soldered 14 karat, if you leave the surface exposed, it gets oxidized and like it requires really like a lot of cleanup beyond just pickling to get the surface back to way it used to be. Same thing with like, if you're making like a big brass cuff and you're gonna anneal it, if you don't cover it with something like a fire coat, it's just gonna oxidize and then there'll be a lot of pure copper at the surface that you have to sand off. And that may not be a huge problem, but there are times where it really helps. It also prevents fire scale, which is something that people get super freaked out about. Um, we don't actually have it happen all that often in the studio. What happens when you have especially a thick piece of silver that gets sustained heating? The oxygen basically penetrates down to deeper levels and it combines with the copper that's in there. So you get copper oxide. But instead of being just at the surface where you can easily sand it off, it's deeper. So it shows up as like sort of red or purple-y kind of stuff, but because it's deep in, it's not something you can easily sand off. So it's a little problematic. Um, usually if, like I said, I have a really big piece and we're gonna do sustained heating and stuff like that, I will use something like a fire coat to protect it. You can also use fire scoff, which is like that ceramic spray, which works really well and is really nice, but it's pretty pricey, but so, what I'm gonna show you is much less expensive. So we need a couple of extremely simple things. One, denature alcohol. Do not comment and say, can I use tequila? No, denatured alcohol. This is the same kind of fuel that you use in a Bunsen burner or anything like that. It basically burns like quickly. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is boric acid. Now, people will also be like, can I use borax instead? Borax, boric acid. Related, yes. Borax, um, I'm not a real chemistry major, so I'll just like keep it pretty simple. Borax is far more like what they dig out of the ground with some different stuff in there, where the boric acid is much more purified. So it's kind of like making out with your significant other's cousin at a party, even though they're related, it's not the same thing. So boric acid. Now on the bright side, boric acid is actually very cheap and they sell it as like roach and ant killer. Um, so you want something that's 100% boric acid, but if you just Google it, you know what I mean? There's a million sources for it. It's not that expensive. Uh, I got this like giant kills roaches uh, jar of it here for like, I don't know, it was like $4 or something like that. So. The third thing you need is just like a glass jar with a lid because the denatured alcohol, like nail polish remover or anything like that, like it starts to evaporate really quickly. So if it's not like in a really tight jar with a tight fitting lid, it's just gonna evaporate. So what I've done is I have just poured, I don't know, this looks like maybe about two inches of it in here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill it half of the height of the alcohol with the boric acid. That's all you have to do. One part, denatured alcohol, half a part of the boric acid. So I'm just gonna pour it in here till it looks basically even. Um, it's not exactly, um, you don't have to get super crazy with measuring it so exactly. I'm gonna lean back a little bit. I'm not sure I wanna be, there we go. So you see, squirting it in there and I'm gonna keep going until it's about the half the height of my alcohol. Now what you'll notice also is this won't really stay dissolved super well in here. After it sits for a minute or two, the boric acid is just gonna sink to the bottom. So when you go to use it, you're just gonna stir it up or like take your piece and you know swish it around in there a little bit. Otherwise you'll end up with mainly alcohol. And as long as I keep this nice and tight and all my alcohol doesn't evaporate, this will really last me a long time. This would have been a lot more exhilarating if I had 
poured it out into like a measuring cup or something first so you don't get to sit and watch me um, squeeze this little tub, but guess what? I didn't, so here we go. So I'll hold it up so hopefully you can see it. It's basically, you can see where the boric acid is, is sort of like solid and white, and it's about half the height of the alcohol. So all I have to do now, when I'm gonna use it, is I'm gonna stir it up and coat my piece in it. Now, to get the coating actually to stay on the piece, you have two basic methods. You can dip your piece and then actually light it and just burn off the alcohol. It's not gonna like make a huge like amount of fire, but you'll see it get a little green and it'll burn off. You can also just let it sit um, because the alcohol will evaporate in just a couple minutes. If you let it evaporate as opposed to lighting it on fire, you do get a thicker coating, um, but most of the time, either method will give you plenty. So I don't usually really worry about it. The one thing you do want to be concerned with is you do not want to have your nice jar of your uh, fire coat here on your bench and you've got it open and you know, you're dipping your stuff and then you're lighting it and then like, oh, I knocked it over and I have a flame in my hand, kablamo. Don't do that. So what I usually do, like for example, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but as I'm mixing this up, I don't have the torch like out right here. It's hung on the bottom, it's turned off. And you just wanna be aware of that. Now, if this jar were to catch on fire, you would wanna put the lid on, which would put the fire out right away. But again, what if you hit it with your arm and then you knock it across the table and yourself? It's probably going to scare the crap out of you and you might get a little burnt and you don't want that. So keep in mind, this is flammable, so don't get too cuckoo bananas with it and set yourself or anything else on fire.